stupid reactions. Tune in for the <laughs> Hey, welcome back to our Stupid Reactions, you idiots. I'm Corbin. I'm Rick. And no funny intro today. Um, you, everybody knows what happened today. Uh, it's a it's a very sad day, um, but we also um, want to celebrate the life of Irfan Khan. Uh, yes. So that's basically all you're going to see today is we have a bunch of uh, Irfan Khan videos to celebrate that man and that artist. Uh, starting with this one, uh, right when right uh, well I heard I think I I woke up at like 1 a.m. and I got a, a drove of of texts uh, and messages from stupid yeah. movies. Uh, about what happened and then when Rick woke up uh, we were both like we should watch something so there also might be a marathon going on of Irfan Khan uh, in the coming days or weeks because you know we just we love that man and we want to celebrate him and we want to see everything that it's it's the same thing it hasn't changed we want to just yeah. watch everything that man's ever done and so yep. I, I did a poll and the first thing uh, the thing that everybody wanted us to watch uh, in that poll, it won decisively. It was Pan Singh Tomar, which you're probably like, guys, you've never reacted to that trailer. You are correct. Uh, you are correct. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but there's a reason for that. Uh, the stupid family that usually do our stuff, they actually subbed it for us a long time ago, and it got blocked. And so it kind of just got put. I don't know why it got blocked, but it did. Uh, it, it just it was never sent to us because, you know, if, if there's no point in us reacting to it if it's just going to get blocked right away. But anyways, uh, it was highly, highly requested. We wanted to um, do something to honor the man, and so we watched Pan Singh Tomar, uh, starring Irfan Khan. Uh, and it's, do you want to read the synopsis for me real quick, Rick? Yeah, sure. The story of Pan Singh Tomar, an Indian athlete and seven-time national steeplechase, cha steeplechase champion who becomes one of the most feared decoits in Chambal Valley after his retirement. Decoits? Mm-hmm. Wow. What a word. Yeah, they, I know they used they used that word a, a lot throughout the film. Decoits. Decoits. And uh decoits. Yeah. And I was like, I had you ever heard that word? No. I'm an honors I'm an honors English in college student and I you learn something new every day. I'm a high school uh, English student. Yeah, de decoit <laughs> is a member of a band of armed robbers in India or Burma. Interesting. So a gangster. Uh, but this is uh, based on a true story. That is actually true. Uh, it's, is, not, it's not like true. Lagan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yes, uh, directed by, say his name for me. Uh, directed by uh, Tigmanshu Dulia. Who worked on Gangs of Wasper in some fashion. I don't know what, uh, what fashion that was. Uh, yeah, I saw, that, I saw that as well. And I don't know what, what capacity he was uh, involved in. But initial thoughts, Rick. Um, I took notes as I am so off to do. Uh, it's as far as the film is concerned. I I didn't really like the film. Mm. Um, as far as Irfan's concerned, <laughs> it just goes to prove once again uh, he's. Um, it's like we always go back to examples. There's there's examples of actors and actresses we've seen who were in films that we didn't necessarily think were that good, but they were their usual towering self, like Tom Hardy in Venom. Or uh, even one of the first people that comes to mind is, um, I didn't like the movie Vice, but I thought Christian Bale was unbelievably good in mm. Vice. Uh, same thing with, uh, same thing with. I wasn't a big fan of Alice in Wonderland, but I thought Johnny Depp's Mad Hatter was fantastic. <laughs> um, yeah. This, this, this for me was just another example. Of, the only reason I watched this was because even in a film that for me I felt was, uh, I have a lot of uh, criticisms about it that I don't have any ill will toward in any way. They're just particular things that I thought I just didn't like. But every moment Irfan's on the screen, He's Irfan Khan. I've never seen the man do bad work. I've really enjoyed his performance in this uh, because it was so different from anything I've ever seen. Yeah, it uh, was. I've never seen, I mean, I know he wasn't technically a full-on villain, but he was playing a pretty villainous role by the end of it. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I'm an anti-hero villain kind of 
thing. Yeah, I mean, it was yeah. A, it was a great situation uh, with this character. Um, yeah, but, it was. Uh, that I'd never seen him play that. It's usually he's the yeah. good guy. He's the um, he's the straight man. Uh, mm-hmm. And that kind of stuff, and so I've really enjoyed seeing this different side of him uh, that I hadn't seen before. And I, you know, I love when people play villains. I do. Um, so I, I really enjoyed it. I thought the the journey it took uh, in it with his character was really interesting because uh, at, at the beginning it was almost like a Forrest Gumpish type thing going on, uh, right? For a little bit, uh, yeah. And then it, it switched to. Um, him in the in his role in the gang, uh, which I thought he did a masterful job at. Um, he's, yeah, he's their fun con man. Yeah, it's it's and then and then I didn't even know Nawaz was in it, but it was wonderful Me too. to see him. <laughs> I know. I was like, hey, Nawaz. It was wonderful to see that man. Uh, yep. And I, I, this must have been early because it was a tiny little role, um, and which you know, of course, he killed it. Um, but yeah, yeah, he did as usual. Irfan's, um, I th- he's. He... It makes me so sad because <laughs> one, yep. he's still in his goddamn prime. Um, yep, he, he's fifty-three, way too, way, way too young. Um, way too young. Uh, and like an actor's prime is basically from late twenties until death. Is, yep. what, is what I think. Uh, like. Well, yeah, and I and I think really for actors that are as uh, I really many actors will tell you that they felt like it wasn't until they hit fifty that they really felt they had enough life experience and things to work with that at that point, I mean, frickin' Morgan Freeman's career didn't start till he was forty eight. Brian Cranston really didn't start getting his legs until he was in his late 40s there's a whole slew of actors that people didn't even know and Irfan already had 150 plus credits to his resume and could have had he been here graced us with another 150 films yeah he's such a such a talented talented man and this this film as well highlighted that uh yeah I I thought it was a great performance for him um in in the in the parts that I actually really enjoyed the film towards the end, um, and it's it's not a film that I really despise. It's not with something like that. I think the major problem with this film is how they did the pacing and the cutting of the time frame. It made it That's a- it made it very difficult to follow, and also because like you're you're like okay, we're getting the story, and then they do a cut, and I I think we're years ahead now. Uh, yeah, and so it, but they didn't make it clear. And yeah. that's, I think, the biggest flaw with this film is the, the cutting or the editing or the, 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 the weaving together of the story. Um, it, it just it felt, even though it was a two hours, 45 minute film, it felt rushed almost at times in terms of them trying to uh, put stories together that didn't go together like seamlessly for the audience. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and we're coming from a c- completely naive point of view. Maybe it's not that hard because he was a real figure, and maybe a lot of Indians know about him. And so maybe they there's like that. Um, the uh, they're assuming the audience already knows about this man, and so two Americans who know absolutely zilch, trying to follow along while they're doing cuts between years, and you don't know what year it is now. It makes mm-hmm. it a little difficult to follow for me. I agree with you, and I felt. I didn't have any problems with the film in terms of, uh, this, this may sound like a contradiction, but it isn't. Um, I, I saw their attempts at what they were doing. Mm. Uh, so uh, so I, give them, I give them a grade A in terms of I could see what the director and the cinematographer were trying to attempt. It felt like they were very inexperienced in what they were doing, very inexperienced. There was, that was a big, one of my first notes in this was uh, very odd disjointed both uh, film edits and score edits that just yeah. were very incongruent. Um, and then I, there was a lack, I wrote down a lack of tonal symmetry and thematic congruity frame to frame and composition to composition with the score, which just to me evidenced inexperience with the filmmakers understanding the pacing and the flow of a film, which is not easy to, to, to do. So if you, if you are working on a film and I could be wrong, I mean, I looked at their history and their resumes and I think 
they, they don't have a long list of experience prior to the film. And, and it also, because of that as well, this did not feel like a film from 2012. It felt like a mid 1990s film. Yeah. Um, it, when it, you, at certain parts, it, it felt like that. Yeah. Yeah. It felt like a film from as far as the, the evolution of cinema, both in, in Hollywood and Bollywood, because films, the films that were around in 2012, in, in both here and in India, we're talking Django, uh, Argo, Life of Pi, uh, Gangs of Wasseper, English of English, uh, Kahani. This does not feel like it's a contemporary to those films in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, um, I, I agree for the most part with, especially the first half, that it definitely felt like that for me. I think the best part of the film is when they stopped doing the cuts and it was full on him at the end with the gang. Uh, That's the best part of the film. Traveling along because they weren't doing the weird cuts and I could keep, I was like, okay, we're in this time frame, and I'm, I know where we are. Uh, and so I think that's why it, it works so well. And I think that's why I think the biggest problem of the film was the cuts and the, the incongruent, um, it, at least to us Americans, feel of uh, them piecing it together like that. Uh, like I said, we know nothing about this man. It might have been really easy for you guys to follow at the beginning uh, because you already know his story. We didn't, and it was hard to follow because of it. Uh, but the end, I, I actually really enjoyed, um, and I thought, especially there at the end, all the acting was really, really good, uh, all the writing, and I thought like the action sequences between them um, and, and them running from the cops and all that stuff, that was really compelling. The last, what, 45 minutes, I guess it would be? Of, uh, mm -hmm. of the film when they were doing the hunt down, basically. Um, yeah. But... Um, I think I think my favorite thing, obviously, apart from the just the the beautiful artist that is Irfan, who I've never seen do bad work, and it's funny, this is a film that I wouldn't recommend, but I would still tell you, if you want to watch Irfan be his usual beautiful self, and you just like watching that man on screen, which virtually everybody in the world <laughs> who's seen him does... Mm -hmm. You can watch him in this, and he'll carry you through the whole film. The the other thing besides Irfan that I that that I like, and I say this all the time, is this is clearly, especially with those end credits when they dedicated the film to all of the forgotten athletes, and that that's the reason they wanted to make the film. And that's I could feel. That's why I don't want to sound contradictory. As much as I felt like this was inexperienced in certain respects, and I didn't understand not just time space continuum they were juxtaposing. There's the word, but the, just just the rhythms and the beats of a film, I could feel the intentionality with which they wanted to tell something that was really important to them. I, I could I could feel that, not just because I knew it was coming in the end credits, but that helped to underscore they really wanted people to not forget. And that's not just an Indian problem. That's That happens here in America, guys. That's, we, that's a we worldwide get, problem with Olympians. It's a worldwide problem. You get gold medalists that the entire world is celebrating who end up same thing with professional athletes. You get pro NFL players who wind up homeless and uh, they're forgotten. But it's especially disappointing, and I can understand this as we've learned more about India, to have someone who was a national hero be forgotten. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that that's my other, besides Irfan's brilliance, it's yeah. the importance of a, a story of something there, like that. There were a lot of parts of the story that I, I really enjoyed. Basically, he became his father. Um, essentially, he became the rebel, uh, and he was kind of, which is why I, I don't fully call him a villain because he was almost forced into it with with the system. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because obviously, these people murdered his mother um, and and beat up his child uh, for some crops. Uh, yeah, and that moment, that moment, he said at one point, he said, "Turn the radio off." You know, I, I become the national champion for them and no one talks about me. But now because I'm a bad guy, the whole country's talking about me. Yeah, I, I would under I would understand that so, conundrum is mine. I like I liked that a lot. Uh, I, I did really enjoy his relationship with his wife. Uh, I did, too. I thought it was cute. I thought it was. Adorable. I did, too. Um, like when he was, she was, he was, she was, she was insecure <laughs> about him showing his legs. Uh, yeah, I know. He was a horn dog, man. Yeah. He's like every time he saw her, he's like, "Come here, baby." <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I thought that was great. Obviously, Nawaz did well. I, that man can't do bad. I, 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 
I no. challenge you to send me something where Nawaz has done bad, and I will tell you you're wrong. Uh, yep. <laughs> I don't think it's possible for that man it's, to do it's the, it's the same with Irfan. He's one of the few. There's a very small handful of actors, maybe a dozen or so, I would say, off the top of my head. Because even Daniel Day-Lewis, as much as he is, for me, the quintessential greatest craftsman I've ever seen in my life as a shape-shifting actor, uh, he's not good in nine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, he does his ample best, and I, I applaud him for the attempt. But I've seen him do not good work. I've never – there's a few actors. Sir Anthony Hopkins is always right at the top of my mind. Nawaz is there now, and Irfan is, is there. I've never seen Irfan be false, ever. Even – there was a moment where I was watching him in this film. It's a very small throwaway moment. He's just listening, and all of his other bandit guys are there. And he gets up from where he was sitting, and he stretches. And I watched him in that moment do that stretching. And I was, I, again, I just, I did this. I went, he probably didn't feel the need to stretch. He has to make us believe he's stretching. It's a throwaway moment in a shot that's wide. And I believe that he is tired from sitting for a long time. And he's not indicating he's not being false. This guy was made to be a thespian. He's just a beautiful, beautiful craftsman. The most <laughs> effortless effortless I've ever seen. Effortless. Uh, effortless. It's it's ridiculous how effortless effortlessly effortless he makes it seem. Uh, yeah, him, and, that, that him goes... and Sir Anthony Hopkins for me are the two most effortless actors I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, and I think it's um, it's telling the people that have worked with him. Like there was that quote that I sent you with Tom Hanks. Yeah, he, Tom Hanks walked up to him first day he's, he worked with him. He says, "I'm going to steal everything from you." Yeah, <laughs> basically, yep. uh, which is he's like, I'm going to I'm going to start talking softly. I'm going to make people wait for my the, the words to come out of my mouth. Yes. And I'm going to be the coolest person in the room. I, I don't know if you I don't know if you've done this, but I have and I'm sure I'll do it the rest of my life. There have been times I've been working on something, uh, whatever it might be, even something as small as just like there's a couple of things I've done. Uh, where it's lip syncing a scene from on on TikTok, and you're actually you're more focused on the lip syncing, but you're actually reenacting the emotional connection, right? And I've had the thought, be you know, be earphone small. I mean, that's that's a constant thing in my mind in terms of uh, his his capacity to just be natural and small and do nothing and make it. That's the hardest thing that people who don't understand the craft of acting. The hardest thing to do as an actor is to not act, mm. to be small and allow yourself to not perform, to have the camera rolling and know all eyes are on you and you have the trust in the craft and everybody else around you to just mm. be. It's, it's, he's as good as it gets. Yeah. And did you catch that moment? It made me really sad in the film. They were getting out of the, they in the car. When they shot, when they were getting, no, yeah, okay. Now, so the, remember the person that was in the trunk, yeah, okay. Uh, right at the end, I think they were either talking or it was on the radio, and they uh, somebody said the famous Bollywood actor uh, died today. He has been battling cancer and died in the hospital for the past two years. That was the moment where the guy shoots the guy in the car and the other guys in the trunk. I didn't hear that. I was so focused on the dialogue. I did not hear that. Yeah, when I I, well, I read the sub, obviously I don't understand Hindi, but um, the uh, I was reading the subs and it, it said that, and it just made me really, really sad. Ah, uh, really, really sad. But yeah, uh, so we love you, Irfan. So yep. much. You're very, very missed. Uh, thank yep. you for leaving your legacy and your art behind for us to uh, love and appreciate. You will live on forever because of that. Amen. But please let us know what uh, Irfan Khan film we should watch next. Because we're going to watch them all. Because that's all we're watching. (laughs) Our stupid reactions. Tune in for